Hello, my name is Michael and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to create this really cool looking 3D interactive button inside Storyline um, and you can use it in some of your projects and really make them stand out. So this whole idea with the interactive um, buttons um, comes from the web design UX uh, industry in fact. Um, there are a lot of cool animations and a lot of cool interactions that you can create with buttons uh, and put them on, the, on different websites and applications. But since we are working on Storyline, we don't have all of these capabilities, but this doesn't mean that we cannot create, you know, some, some of them at least, and, you know, make these cool, cool looking buttons. So um, check this out. So you hover over it, lifts up a little bit, and then when you click it, it goes down, and then when you release, it goes up. So, um, it really looks like this is a, uh, a 3D button and it actually interacts with your mouse when you hover over it and when you click it. So it looks really cool. Now let me show you how to create it. I think this will not be a very long tutorial, but it doesn't matter. Uh, once you create it, you can use it in all of your projects. Um, and I'll also include the storyline file um, below the video. Okay, so this is my initial project. Let's create a new slide. You know, just a, just a blank slide. And let's recreate this. So first off, um, I like to change the background. Uh, I don't I don't like it when it's you know full white. So I pick this one just below the white. It's kind of grayish. Um, the next thing we have to do is um, insert a shape. Let's, I'll make it slightly bigger, um, just so you can see what's happening, obviously, in your projects. If it's just a button, you don't need to make it as big. So I'll pick this cool red color. I'll remove the outline and I will center it and um, align it to the middle as well. The next thing we have to do is we have to write uh, the text, which in our case is push me. And it's really important to do it this way and not create, you know, a separate object that is a, you know, a text object, a text box. It's really important to um, write the text on top of your shape because when we, uh, when we create the, um, the down position and when we create the illusion that you're clicking the button uh, if the text is not actually you know, if it's not on your shape uh, it will not move with the shape and it will look very weird so okay here is our text let's make it let's fill up the rectangle so maybe yeah 60 looks pretty nice let's bold it as well yeah i think this looks brilliant so now the next thing we have to do is we have to go to the states tab, edit states, and we have to create that 3D effect. So we click on the rectangle and we control C, control V, we create a duplicate. And now we have to change the color to something darker. The next thing we have to do is we have to send it to back. So it's behind our uh, initial shape. And you can already see the 3D effect coming to life. So it's up to you um, how much of it you want to show underneath. But I think about this much, just a little bit more. I think this looks great. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to create this little lift before the button goes down. Um, this is actually a principle, a principle in animation as well. So when you are animating an object, you never animate it from a standstill position and make it move somewhere uh, somewhere else on the screen. It's it's good practice to have that object kind of uh, you know take a step back first, uh, move it back a little bit first, and then send it to a different position. This is how this is how things work in real life as well. You don't just stand still and immediately start running. Um, you know, you lean back and then you take that first step. So um, 
you know, just a cool, uh, just a side, um, side note. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to create this um, little lift that I mentioned. So we'll use the hover state for that. So it just copies the normal state without the rectangle underneath. And now we have to click on the actual rectangle go to format so we can look at the X and Y axis and we have to move it up six pixels to really exaggerate that that movement. So you can see minus six pixels on the Y axis. Now what we have to do is we have to create the down state. So we create a new state, we select the down state and again it copied the rectangle from the normal state and all we have to do now is push it not up but down and to really exaggerate this we'll push it down not 6 but 12 pixels you can see 12 pixels here on the y-axis and now the final thing is to create this little shadow over here it's just a nice addition to the overall thing so we go to states, we edit the normal state, we take the rectangle underneath, we control C, control V it, we send it back, and now we have to change the color to this grayish color that is just the, the one, like two below our background, basically. Now let's align it down just a little bit. I think this looks really good. Okay. Now we're done editing the states. We've pretty much created all the movements that we want to have. And now let's preview this. Okay. We hover over it. It lifts up. We push it down. It goes down. And looks very realistic it, it looks like a 3d button and obviously you can scale it down you can make it smaller and you can just use it in your projects for example you can use it in a quiz maybe this is answer a maybe you duplicate it make it a different color make it answer b or you um or maybe it's a yes or no you can also use it to, to trigger an animation to start for example this is a, an emergency button and you click click it and then jumps to the next slide where you have maybe um, a short video on you know safety training or something like that there are a lot of ways that you can use this cool cool looking button um, so I hope this was useful if you're watching this on YouTube please give me a like and subscribe to my channel I will be posting tutorials like these weekly um, and if you are looking for uh, help with your storyline or e-learning projects. I'm a freelancer, so feel free to reach out um, and we can talk how we can collaborate. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.